Hi there and welcome back to the channel. This video really means a lot to me and I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you who has supported me along the way. But more on that later, let's get into today's video. Have you been keeping up with the latest in the world of Kado game development? Well, let me drop a bombshell for you. Since the epic release of Kado 4.0 on January 24th, 2022, up until this very moment that we're chatting in this video, Godot has been on a wild ride with over 80 version releases. And wrap your head around this. In the span of almost one year from January to the time of making this video, we've seen a whopping 50 plus releases out of those 80. 2023 has been a year of turbocharged updates for Godot, nearly doubling the number of revisions compared to previous years. And guess what? As of making this video, the latest stable version is at a trilling 4.1.3. And believe it or not, 4.2 betas are already available for testing. But hold your horses. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, my friends, that's a subjective question. In today's video, let's discuss what Godot's version frenzy means to us and analyze whether it's a game changer or a game over situation. This is Dirago Games. Is Godot really the game development superstar that deserves your precious time? Let's get into it. Okay, picture this. So you got this burning desire to create a game. So like me, you throw on your rose-colored glasses ready to embark on your game development journey. As you scour the vast landscape of software options, something catches your eye. Godot? What's this? It's a free and open source game engine that caters to both 2D and 3D game development dreams. There are no sneaky runtime fees, no premium version holding the best features hostage, and it plays nicely with your PC. Sounds too good to be true, right? Anyway, you take the plunge, downloading the latest stable build, and it's a breeze in a matter of seconds with no cumbersome installation process. You open Godot and the moment it opens, you're met with a sleek modern interface, setting the stage for endless possibilities. You're pumped up and ready to dive into the game development world with Godot leading the way. But let's keep it real. That initial hype starts to fade really quickly. The reality sinks in. Game development is no walk in the park. And just like other game engines out there, Godot has its strengths and, of course, its limitations. It's a game of give and take. Okay, let's dive into the nitty-gritty of Godot 4's intricacies. Despite the 80 plus revisions that Godot 4 flaunts, now brace yourself, HTML5 exports are currently playing hard to get on macOS and iOS. Blame it on those pesky upstream bugs involving Shared Array Buffer and WebGL 2.0 and exporting projects written in c -sharp to the web is still a no-go. For that web-friendly c -sharp action you're longing and looking for, you're better off sticking with Godot 3. I guess it's just a matter of what the in-crowd is looking for. And speaking of c -sharp, let's shine a light on its presence in Godot. While it is supported, consider it to be a VIP guest that hasn't fully settled in. There's a bit of a dance involved, some hoops of sorts to jump through in order to get it to play nice. But once you've got it dialed in, the magic happens. C Sharp in Godot unlocks the door to creating some seriously impressive stuff. For that, you can check out what my buddy Hamsterbyte does over on his channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Now, if C Sharp isn't fully integrated, then what takes a spotlight? Enter our beloved baby language, GDScript, Godot's native scripting language. Our little linguistic prodigy is Godot's way of expressing itself in the world of game development. And here's the cool part. It even has its own playpen built right into Godot's interface. This playpen is your go-to spot for crafting the language of nodes, exploring the vast possibilities within Godot's sandbox. 
It's like giving our baby GDScript a safe and creative space to grow and thrive, right here in the heart of Godot's nurturing environment. This analogy does not mean that GDScript is a weak and fragile language. Allow me to explain. Godot took its first steps into the free and open source world back in 2014, introducing GDScripts to the scene. Compare that to C-Sharp, whose roots trace back to July 2000 with Microsoft's .NET Framework initiative. Clearly, C-Sharp boasts a more mature base with years of development backing it up. But here's the burning question. Is C-Sharp really superior to GDScript? After all, GDScript is tailor-made for Godot's scene-based architecture, boasting the ability to specify strict typing of variables. The debate rages on, my friends. The ongoing saga of c -sharp versus GDScript in the world of Godot seems never-ending. Why not let me know what you think of baby GDScript and Papa c -sharp in the comments? But rest assured, with each revision, the Godot team is on a mission to turn c -sharp integration into more than just a dream. It's a journey marked by dedication and determination. The Godot team isn't just tweaking a few lines of code. They're laying the groundwork to transform c -sharp integration from a work in progress to a full-fledged reality. Now let's circle back to the main question. Is this Godot version frenzy a game changer or a potential game over situation? To answer that, let's peek into the Steam database, a treasure trove of games crafted with Godot. Sure, there's a disclaimer about data accuracy, but here's the lowdown. There are literally hundreds of commercial games booted from Godot. Quality varies from top-notch to, well, not so good. These games aren't all AAA giants with massive success stories. The truth is, the majority are indie games hailing from indie studios. And here's the kicker. These studios wield the exclusive rights to their creation and pay nothing in royalties to the game engine. Now, the Steam hosting angle is a whole different ballgame but we'll save that discussion for another day. Still not convinced? Let's pivot to a more curated list on the official Godot website showcase. These games are the real deal, stamped with Godot's seal of approval, showcasing a commendable level of quality. And I urge you to check them out when you have some time. The links are in the description. In conclusion, is the revision frenzy a game changer? Yes, without a doubt. The key is to heed the recommendations and stick to the most stable version for your game development. And if a shinier version does emerge during your creative cycle, you're not obligated to upgrade. Check compatibility, keep that project backup handy, and you're golden. The Godot journey is an exciting ride, and with the right approach, it's definitely worth your time. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this one holds a special place in my heart, commemorating the completion of my 100th video on this incredible YouTube journey. It's official. I've now joined the community of YouTubers. When I initially launched this channel, my goal was to create 100 videos and amass 100 subscribers. To my surprise, with the completion of my 100th video, I now nearly have 500 subs. I never imagined that would happen. Throughout this adventure, the learning curve has been steep and i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you who have supported me whether you've subscribed to my channel liked videos or shared your thoughts in the comments your engagement means the world to me a special shout out goes to hamsterbite who has been sort of a mentor on my game development and youtube journey thus far join me as we continue this amazing journey right here share your thoughts hit that subscribe button and let's explore the world of Godot game development together.